Hey everyone, Chris G here, and here we have the Cafe Grind and Brew Coffee Maker, which is the worst best coffee maker that you should and should darn shan't buy. Every review I have found on this has either been paid for or sponsored by GE. Basically, they gave a bunch of free machines to everybody on Instagram, TikTok, Bed Bath & Beyond's website, etc. and so forth, and I really couldn't find an actual honest review of this machine. So I thought I would do the Lord's work and bring an honest review to you. I bought this with my own money. Anyway, I'm gonna complain about this thing, which apparently seems to be a given theme on this channel lately. I apparently just buy things and about them, but uh, hey, at least that means that you're getting um, a transparent review about it, or at least things that you should know about maybe before you buy. I don't know, either that or I'm just a whiner, one of the others. Either way, let's dive right in to this particular coffee maker. So, it is not a fancy espresso machine with a bunch of bells and whistles like milk, milk frothers and cafe macchiato lattes, etc. and so forth. No, this is just a simple drip coffee machine. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if you are a co coffee snob, you can appreciate the fine subtle notes of good drip coffee. In comes a more premium model that doesn't just brew the coffee for you, but it also grinds it as well. That's kind of a nice option for those that either don't want to invest in a grinder or just like the taste of fresh ground beans in the morning. Sort of science says that if you grind your beans fresh, ultimately you will get the best cup of joe. Now a grind and brew coffee maker has very few competitors on the market in general. So you have Braville with their grind and brew, although that gets pretty piss poor ratings. I might get a little bit more into that later. Cuisinart also has a lineup of grind and brew machines. You have a couple of Chinese ones, like from, I think, Gevi. Um, you've got the True Brew from DeLonghi, but that one doesn't really count, and I'll also get into a little bit of that more later. Um, so that leaves the market sort of open for these kinds of product categories, which is a little bit surprising considering the fact that it's a very convenient and ultimately produces a nice cup of coffee, but a very convenient uh, type of coffee machine. Now let's go ahead and dive into some things that I like about it first. It's gorgeous. It really is a nice looking machine. It's made of, frankly, some fairly decent materials and good plastics. I would actually argue that from a material standpoint, this is built better than the Mocha Master. Now the Mocha Master is supposedly gonna last you 100 years and it's the last coffee machine you will ever need to buy. However, this one just feels a little bit better and more premium in the hands. I also like the way it looks. It's modern, it's pretty, it's got this nice stainless steel with this sort of rose gold trim. Matches their refrigerator lineup if you have a cafe refrigerator or any other appliances really, their ovens, stovetops, et cetera and so forth. So ultimately it's just a nice clean modern look and no complaints there either. And then it's feature rich. Again, it has a grinder built right in and you can program that grinder to go off at certain times throughout the day, of course, usually in the morning. So that means that you will wake up to a freshly brewed cup of coffee. And not only will it grind and then brew the cup of coffee that you set at like, let's call it 7 a.m., but then it will even tell you how long it's been sitting there. So for example, let's say you wake up at 7 a.m., it grinds and brews, you run downstairs maybe 45 minutes later, it'll actually tell you on a little timer on the machine that, hey, this coffee's been sitting here for about 45 minutes. So no, it's not super fresh, but it's still gonna taste pretty damn good. And this thing does use a thermal carafe, so that means that there is no hot plate underneath it heating up the coffee. It's just gonna stay nice and hot in this thermal carafe. And we did find that the coffee stayed hot for several hours. So big props to the, to, to the design there. Another benefit of the cafe machine is that it produces a gold standard cup of coffee. What does that mean? Well, the coffee gods have determined that basically at a specific brew temperature, grind volume, extraction time, all of that mixed together in the perfect way produces the perfect cup of coffee. And it is called the gold standard. Mocha Master has machines that do it, Braville. Anyway, in this combination, basically it is supposed to produce the best cup of coffee. And I will admit that it does in fact produce a fabulous cup. And the nice thing is, is that not only do you uh, have the option to use the carafe, but you also have the ability to turn it into a single like travel cup mode, which is kind of nice for people that just want one, that just want one cup on the go. So that is a solid feature. Now let's go ahead and shit all over this thing because, <clears throat> well, it has it coming. So. First day we set it up, 7 a.m. And by the way, I put it on a wooden credenza, which was a big mistake there, but nevertheless, it's, it's what I did, so just, anyway. Pop this thing on our wooden credenza, sort of like our little coffee bar area. Set it up to brew at 7 a.m. Come downstairs and the thing has leaked everywhere. 
Unfortunately, it wasn't an isolated event. We have brewed maybe now 30 to 40 cups of coffee with this thing, and it has also leaked one big time and then another sort of minor time. But ultimately, if this little water catch area glitches, gets full, whatever, it will leak. And that means that the entire 10 cups that it was brewing of water um, leaked all over the wooden credenza. And yes, it ruined it, and now the wooden credenza needs to be replaced. So that's my fault, but do not put it on anything wood. Put it, this thing on either glass, ceramic, granite, you get the idea. But it doesn't really resolve the point that it leaks, and we couldn't really find a rhyme or reason as to why. But that aside, even when it doesn't leak, we found that this little particular cup area did sometimes like over, even when it was working properly, sort of overflowed with water. Water just sort of built up in that thing. And of course, draining the water inside of this thing was an absolute pain in the butt because you cannot remove this little plastic cup. So basically you have to unplug the machine, take out the grinds, take out any beans that you have in this thing, take out the thermal carafe and like dump it into a sink. That, or you can just take like a towel and just sort of jam it in there and let the towel just soak up all the remaining water. Another big issue with this machine is that coffee grinds get everywhere. Now that actually seems to be a fairly common complaint with both the Cuisinarts and especially the Breville units. But basically, you know, this thing grinds out the coffee and it doesn't just get into the little filter basket that it's designed to get into. No, it gets around the edges of that thing, gets all into this like little plastic areas gets a little bit on the countertops, gets on top of the thermal carafe, gets inside of where the thermal carafe is supposed to sit. I don't know how the hell it manages to do that, but somehow it does. But the point is, is that it manages to get coffee grounds in almost every place other than the filter basket. Now, obviously I'm being a little bit facetious by saying that, but the point is, is this thing makes a mess. Now, I don't really know why they can't design it to do a little bit of a better job, but the same would go for Brayville and Cuisinart as well. But apparently that is an error in this product category, and it's something that any manufacturer of a grind and brew machine should address. Next up is scheduling. Yes, I said that that was a pro in the earlier part of the video. However, it is also a con. For some reason, sometimes the scheduler doesn't work. We don't know why. Again, it was set like it was every other single time. We don't think we had a power outage or anything like that in the middle of the night, but ultimately we woke up and the coffee didn't brew. Now that said, it does brew a cup really fast. So I mean, basically a full 10 cups takes anywhere between like, a, a full cup of coffee will take anything between like four to, to, to eight minutes, depending on like volume, a few other things. But nevertheless, it is pretty fast. So really wouldn't worry too much about that. But nevertheless, it is a small gripe if you are expecting this thing to be reliable in terms of its scheduling. And then last but not least, there is a lot of plastic. For those that are trying to avoid contact of their coffee with plastic, this machine is probably not going to be for you. Now that said, neither is the Mocha Master, which I will do a review on, but the Mocha Master's got a ton of plastic crap in it. This, this at least has fewer plasticky parts. But ultimately, if you wanna go completely non-plastic, both the provided filter as well as parts in the carafe have plastic in it. And the coffee will come in contact with it. So if you're like leery of nanoplastics and BPA and all this other stuff, this machine is definitely going to be a write-off. That said, it is not the worst machine that I have ever experienced with that with, with plastic use in terms of coffee producing, but it's still something that you might want to be aware of. For those that ask if this thing is completely plastic free in terms of coffee contact, the answer is no. And I know that I said that it was my final complaint, but I do have one more. The coffee carafe is maybe one of the worst design carafes I've ever experienced. Um, much like, so I don't have experience with the Brayville's grind and brew. I've only done extensive research on it and have found that other people have had a similar problem. But where the plastic collar meets the, um, meets the double walled insulated metal, there is a very sizable gap, basically like where, where it trims out, where water, coffee, whatever it is, whatever liquid's in here, will get trapped in. So that means that, when, in fact, for me just shaking it a little bit, some water is dripping out of, uh, of the sides. And I'll get some, some uh, close-up and some B-roll. But the point is, though, is that when you are pouring your coffee, water is getting trapped into the collar of the plastic. And for that matter, when you clean it by putting it, like, let's say, in the dishwasher or even doing it by hand, that means soapy water is getting caught in the collar of the plastics. So that means drying it is... It takes more time, it's more of a pain in the butt, and you risk getting soap, soapy water, in your coffee. And to me, that is a huge design flaw. 
Now I know I said the competition on the market is pretty slim, but let's go ahead and talk about them a little bit. So Brayville's Grind and Brew, people also have complaints with that same thing. Basically water seems to get trapped in the collar of the carafe. There's issues with it, with cleaning, where it produces weak cups of coffee after a while, this kind of thing. By all accounts, I would imagine the reliability on this thing is maybe slightly better. However, it does leak, which I have never seen somebody complain about with the Brayville. Then you have the True Brew from DeLonghi which uses one of their proprietary blue head, brew heads, which makes more of an espresso type drink than it does an actual pot of, or, or than, than actual drip coffee. So even though it technically can brew into a carafe, it's not true drip coffee. So we're just gonna go ahead and write that one off altogether. Next up, you have Cuisinart's Grind and Brew lineup. My problem with the Cuisinart lineup is that there seems to be about 50 different types of grind and brews from Cuisinart, all being sold at different vendors. Best Buy's got like a version, Target's got a version. Amazon has a version and none of them are the same and I find that to be a little bit curious and annoying because there doesn't seem to be consistency in the product lineup so thus when you test one you may not be testing the others so I didn't want to take the Cuisinart very seriously because I didn't want to buy like seven different machines and then of course that leaves the Chinese lineup of machines like from Gevi and uh, ultimately sorry but let's be honest you know the quality isn't going to be top-notch there. So again, you have a product category that has very few competitors, all of which seem to have some issues. Cleanup on this thing is not too bad. It doesn't have, I mean, you've got the gold basket, you've got this little plastic piece that the gold basket sits in. You do have like a little brew head thing in here that you can screw off and you, you're gonna wanna clean that as well. And you of course have the where the water goes, the carafe. So it's not the worst cleanup in the world. It's not great. You are going to have some stuff you're going to need to toss in the dishwasher. And then again, with this carafe being as annoying as it is, is going to be a little bit of a problem. But that said that there are worse, and if, by the way, funny enough, look at all the grinds that are trapped in this little brew head thing. I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but anyway. So yeah, there are some issues with this particular unit. And at 350 bucks, I just find it inexcusable. Without a doubt, the coffee the cafe grind and brew produces is a solid cup. Some people might find a little bit of issue with the provided gold filter and that it lets in a little bit of mud and sediment into the coffee. Personally, I don't mind that, although some people do find it creates a bit of a bitter taste. I think that could probably be resolved by maybe using paper filters. But nevertheless, it's a solid cup. And ultimately, you buy a, a, a coffee machine to produce a good cup of coffee. And that it does. It just does it with a little bit too much drama. And again, that's really my only complaint, right? Is it's a little bit too much drama at a high price. It's basically the Kim Kardashian of coffee machines. So, uh, should you buy the Cafe Grind and Brew? Maybe, if you know what you're getting into. There's not a whole lot of other options out there. So, um, I think I might keep it myself, but begrudgingly. Ultimately, um, there are worse products out there, I suppose. Just don't put it on a wooden credenza. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe. Please tell your friends and family about this channel. And we will be back. Oh, if you have any questions about the product, certainly reach out to us in the comments section. And other otherwise, we will be back with another video really soon.